السلام علیکم مائی ڈیئر اسٹوڈنٹس ویلکم ان آن لائن بایولوجی کلاس ہوپ یو آل آر فائن اینڈ پریپیئرنگ یور سیلف فار یور ایگزام سو وی ہیو آلریڈی اسٹارٹیڈ ود اے چیپٹر دیٹ از ریلیٹڈ ٹو فوڈ اور انہانسمنٹ آف فوڈ اینڈ میکزیمم پارٹ وی ہیو کمپلیٹڈ ان دس چیپٹر اینڈ اونلی لاسٹ ٹو پارٹ از ریمیننگ دیٹ وی آر گوئنگ ٹو ڈسکس یا سو وی آر ڈیلنگ ود اے چیپٹر انہانسمنٹ آف فوڈ پروڈکشن اینڈ دس ان دس چیپٹر ٹل ناؤ وی ہیو کمپلیٹیڈ maximum part of the chapter and now we are dealing with the role of microbes as bio fertilizer in last lecture mein hum log iske types dekh chuke hain bio fertilizers ke three types we have seen like nitrogen fixing bio fertilizer phosphate solubilizing bio fertilizer and compost making bio fertilizer so today we are going to start with the another two types that is remaining in this type of bio fertilizer that is the cyanobacteria as a bio fertilizer and fungal bio fertilizers and this is your reduced syllabus that is the reduced part from this chapter so in every video i am sharing this image for you people so that you will be well acquainted with this and you you are not supposed to prepare from this content whatever is given rest all part is included in your syllabus so now let's start with the topic today's topic is cyanobacteria as bio fertilizer now this term cyanobacteria is not new for you people in your lower classes you have studied about the cyanobacteria so it is a aquatic free living or terrestrial bacteria it may be symbiotic aerobic and photosynthetic nitrogen fixing bacteria and it is having single cell and it's a organism that is living on the surface of water or plants in a submerged environment that is the reason it is called as terrestrial or aquatic both now it produce their own food through photosynthetic hence they are the autotrophs and they are native to the paddy it means that rice field mein bahut zyada humko ye organisms nazar aate hain and 20 to 30 kg per hectare iska jo hai wo nitrogen fixing ka a uh, capability hai we can say so it, they will be able to prepare 20 to 30 kg per hectare nitrogen as it is a free living or they are also lived as a association or in symbiotic association we may see this bacteria so in with in which uh, way they are living as a symbiotic association that we will see in next video inshallah so first we will see here that this is the most important um, bacteria that we can say that is available in rice field specially تو رائس فیلڈ میں زیادہ چونکہ جو ہے وہ نائٹروجن کنٹینٹ پرپیئر کرنا ان لوگوں کے لیے آسان ہوتا ہے دیٹ از دا ریزن موسٹ فریکوینٹلی اٹ از اویلیبل ان دا رائس فیلڈ وی ول ٹاک اباؤٹ دا کلاسیفیکیشن آف نائٹروجن فکسنگ بیکٹیریا سو دس سائنو بیکٹیریا از کلاسیفائڈ ان ٹو ٹو دیٹ از ہیٹروسسٹس فیلامنٹس سائنو بیکٹیریا اینڈ نان ہیٹروسسٹس نو ہیٹروسسٹ از اے ٹائپ آف پارٹ وی کین سے اے باڈی پارٹ and in this heterocyst only the total nitrogen fixation work is accomplished by the nitrogen fixing bacteria that is the reason here there are two categories of the bacteria based on the presence of heterocyst and the another one are also called as diazotropic bacteria or diazotrops cyanobacteria about this we have already seen in our last lecture so here we can you can see the different types of heterocyst as well as unicellular bacteria so about this in detail we will see in our next video now if i will talk about the different examples of cyanobacteria as bio fertilizers so there are many like anabina nostoc placetonema oscillatoria etc now among this anabina nostoc and tolipotherix are associated with lichens while anabina is associated with plants like azula and cycas so here they are living in a symbiotic association so about the symbiotic association of anabina and azula we will going to study in our next class if we will talk about the classification of bio fertilizers so on the basis of nature of group of organism bio fertilizers are classified as bacterial bio fertilizers and fungal bio fertilizers so bacterial fertilizers include eubacteria and cyanobacteria on the basis of functions bacterial fertilizers are further grouped as nitrogen fixing phosphate solubilizing and compost making bio bio, bio fertilizers so about all these types we have already seen now we will see about the 
fungal um, biofertilizers now if we will talk about the fungal biofertilizers they are the compost making also means phosphorus phosphate solubilizing and compost making biofertilizers they are the two different variety of these biofertilizers we can say so cyanobacterial biofertilizers on the basis of functions are nitrogen fixing type and fungal biofertilizers include mycorrhizal fungi on the basis of functions they are classified as ectomycorrhiza and endomycorrhiza so now here we will see what are the different types of fungal biofertilizers so uh, the fungal biofertilizers are the mycorrhiza and the mycorrhizal fungus we can say so it form symbiotic association with the underground parts like a rhizome and roots of higher plants occurring in a thick humid forests so these are discovered by frank in the year 1885 now basically they are of two type like ectomycorrhiza and endomycorrhiza so let's have a, a talk about the different types of fungal biofertilizers mycorrhizae are mutualistic symbiotic association formed between the roots of higher plant and fungi it's a greek word mycis mushroom or fungi and rhiza means root so fungal roots were discovered by german botanist ab frank as i told just now in the last century of 1855 in forest trees such as pine so in nature approximately 90% of plants are infected with mycorrhiza 83% dicots 79% monocots and 100% gymnos gymnosperms so here they are living in a symbiotic association with certain plants now they convert insoluble form of phosphorus in soil into soluble form that is the reason they are giving benefit to the environment hence useful for the productivity or the growth of plants basically there are two major types of mycorrhiza that is occurring in nature the very first one is endomycorrhiza or we can say vesicular or vascular mycorrhiza they are common in more than 80% of terrestrial plant species the another type is ectomycorrhiza that is specific to conifers and some broad leaved woody species that is 50% of the plants they are having ectomycorrhiza ect uh, ectomycorrhiza so there exist other there are also presence of other types of uh, mycorrhiza we can say that are, they are ericoid orchid monotropoid mycorrhiza of less ecological importance that is the reason they are not having that much important as the endo and ecto mycorrhiza here you can see the different plants which are consisting of endo mycorrhizal fungi and ecto mycorrhizal fungi so if we will talk about endomycorrhizal fungi they are present inside the plant and they are having symbiotic association or the relationship with approximately 80% of the plant families that is the reason the phosphorus conversion in the plant will be helped by the endomycorrhizae because they pair with most commercially produced plants including green leafy and fruiting or flowering plant they may penetrate into the root cortex and form nutrients exchange structure with the root cells that is the reason they are called as arbuscules or vesicles that is the helping agent for the conversion and if we will talk about the ectomycorrhiza so they are present outside the plant and they also form symbiotic relationship with about 10% of the plant family they mainly pair with the coniferous and many american hardwoods they do not penetrate into the root cell wall but form a sheet around the root and nutrient exchange and that structure is known as hartignite so they are forming the hartignite and then they are exchanging the content or the conversion we can say and helps help it and, and in this way it is helping the plant to grow on the other hand we also um, we may also take the uh, classification on the basis of colonization and non colonization we can say so here you can see that the nutrient transfer when it is take place via roots and the phosphate depletion uh, there take place so like that they are having the colony and another hand you can see there are no uh, no colonies are visible here very easily you can recognize the difference between the 
colonizing area and non colonizing area when there will be a formation of colonies with respect to these uh, special features of the plants we can say so here there is a increase in salt tolerance there is increase in uh, drought resistance so like that we can get uh, the resistance inside the plant and hence the growth of the plant ultimately will increase and it is also showing the resistance to the root pathogens also so that is the reason when these fungal biofertilizers are mixed with the plant or they tie up a relation with the plant then it is helping the plant for its better growth now let's talk in a detail about ectomycorrhiza as from the name it's uh, all, uh, clearly seen that it is uh, present outside the plant so they have a well developed mycelium that forms mantle on the outside of the root you can see how it's a, it, it forms like a, a net like structure it is forming outside the plant so it is uh, most conspicuous and easily recognized uh, the best characterized also we can say and plant roots are enclosed by sheath of fungal hyphae that fungal mycelium penetrate between the cell in cortex of the root so fungal tissues may uh, may account for up to 40% of mass of fruit and hyphae are also extend out into the soil extra matricle hyphae we can say so that is the reason they are present outside and this increase absorptive surface area of root and accelerate uptake of water and nutrients nitrogen potassium calcium and and, uh, and other content also so due to this the plant a vigor growth and yield is also increase some hyphae of mycorrhizal fungus penetrate into the root and forms hatric net so you have also seen the hatric net like structure so that is in the and intercellular space of a root cortex you can see here that how the mycorrhizae get inside and here you can see the brownish structure that is the epidermal cell consisting of this kind of um, type of structure that is the endomycorrhizae so if it is present inside the internal structure of the plant or beneath the root areas so that is called as endomycorrhizae or here we can see the plant root cross section where you can see easily the presence of endomycorrhizae so endomycorrhiza are also called as vesicular arbuscular mycorrhiza in short it is called as vam the fungus does not, does not form a sheet around the roots fungus penetrates the cortical cell but does not penetrate the cell membrane that is the reason it is not having the outer covering or sheath but it is penetrating inside the cell fungus is a membrane of a zygomycete and it is more common than ectomycete because here it is uh, getting inside the uh, root areas and beneath the root area it is it is helping the plants to to share the atmospheric content or the exchange of gases that is the reason it is also called as the helper of the plant in the conversion of the atmospheric gases especially it means for conversion or the fixing of atmospheric nitrogen gas more we may talk about endomycorrhiza it is also known as vesicular or vascular mycorrhiza it develops arbicules and vesicles within root cortical cells arbicules are where carbohydrates and nutrients are exchanged and vesicles are used as storage organ so like this they are exchanging the nutrients or carbohydrates also and it is storing also in the vesicles common in herbaceous plant it is common in herbaceous plants and it forms association with maple uh, cymore ash gum walnut cypress and poplar among others too so that is the reason the endomycorrhiza is having a more importance than ectomycorrhiza because it is exchanging the nutrients or it is uh, converting the, uh, the converting the gases as well as it is exchanging the material as well as the vesicles are useful as a storage organs too here very clearly you may find the difference between the ectomycorrhiza and endomycorrhiza how ectomycorrhiza are present on the surface of the root especially how it is forming a sheet or a covering and then it is helping to exchange the gases you can see the hairy hearting net over here so like this type of hearting net it is forming and helping the plants to grow and if we will talk about the arbuscular mycorrhiza or endomycorrhiza you can 
सी हाउ इट इज़ पेनीट्रेटिंग इन साइड द कॉर्टेक्स एरिया एंड कैसे वो लोग इन बिनी द कॉर्टेक्स वहाँ पर वो लोग दे आर हेल्पिंग इन साइड इन इन साइड द प्लान फॉर द एक्सचेंज ऑफ द डिफरेंट न्यूट्रिय एज वेल एज द वेसिकल्स आर ऑल्सो स्टोरिंग दैट पर्टिकुलर न्यूट्रिय तो इस तरीके से एंडोमाइकोराज एंड एक्टोमाइकोराइजा दे आर हेल्पिंग इन द ग्रोथ ऑफ प्लांट सो द प्लांट विथ वी एम grow luxuriantly in less irrigated lands the association of vam with crop plants help in conversion of less productive field into more productive field so here you can see the association formed between the vam as well as the lichens so yahan pe aap log dekh sakte hain ki kis tarike se in endomycorrhiza here you can see that how luxuriantly they are growing inside the inside the root of the inside the root of or the structure of the plant and then it is helping the plant for its pro, more productivity or the productive field we can say so like that they are helping the plants for its growth now we will see the benefits of mycorrhiza as for nutrient system growth for nutrient efficiency as well as for water absorption all the three beneficial areas is covered by mycorrhiza mycorrhizal fungi support faster plant establishment it access water and nutrient beyond the root zone and deliver them to the plant's vascular network it also increase absorption area by as much as 50 time so overall the root biomass will increase if we will talk about nutrient efficiency so mycorrhizal hyphae absorb and actively deliver nutrients directly to the roots it improve utilization of soil nutrients in using nitrogen phosphorus potassium and micronutrient and the water absorption is also very well done by the mycorrhiza because they absorb and transport a soil moisture from beyond the root zone to the plant's root so the mycorrhizal symbiosis increase the plant's effective water utilization capacity and hence improved tolerance to stress and it is also having the greater resistance to drought so whenever when there will be a growth of mycorrhiza inside the plant so overall growth will start taking place inside that particular plant nowadays mycorrhiza are classified into eight different types that are ectomycorrhiza endomycorrhiza ectendomycorrhiza orchidaceous mycorrhiza ericoid mycorrhiza arbutoid mycorrhiza monotrepoid mycorrhiza and ophioglossoid mycorrhiza so these are the eight different types nowadays we can say that mycorrhiza is classified so here like this we have completed this part that is type of biofertilizers and in as a role of my, uh, microbes as a biofertilizer now la, uh, this mu this much was the content uh, given in your textbook you may also refer the extra content uh, that is available online also try to uh, collect the more information about this topic because it is very important as per the examination point of view simply when you will read the content whatever given in the textbook that is also okay for you people so please go through the content thoroughly whatever if it is not understood to you that concept you can ask to me and if it is not understood please go through the video one more time try to uh, recollect the data whatever we have uh, we have studied in earlier video because it is in continuation to so last do jo video the uska jo aapko jo hai wo link mein dekhna padega tabhi aapko ye video samajh mein aane wala hai to so, inshallah next time that will be our last video from this chapter so that time we will complete this chapter so till that take care assalam alaikum